Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. RevDirects here with Good Clean Gaming IRX, and today we are back in Star Citizen. We are out in the Aaron Halo today, and uh, I am going to go about cracking this rock. This has got Quantanium in it, um, which you can tell just by looking at it by the uh, by the orangey streaks here uh, that are all through the rock, uh, and then you can also scan it. Uh, if you hit V, you'll be able to hold the left mouse button and scan it. As you can see, I've got 37.91% quantanium, almost uh, almost 38%, uh, which means this one's going to be a lot of money. Um, I was out actually just a couple of minutes ago, and uh, I was able to break uh, one of the another rock in the area, and. Um, Brought home 30, 32 SCUs, a full cargo hold of, uh, of Quantanium, which I've got uh, queued up and uh, processing, and that should net me about 275,000 or so. Um, so, yes, a lot. A lot of Alpha UEC. Um, so, with today's video, we're going to go over a couple tips and tricks. Um, as you can see here, I've actually got one of my uh, one of my org members here with me today. He's got his other laser up there, uh, up on the uh, up there, providing a zero laser, and that actually helps to stabilize uh, stabilize the beam. So we've got 100% quantanium there. It helps to stabilize the rock. Um, let's see here, we've got another one of 100% Quantanium there as well. And then, let's see here. We've got another one with Quantanium. That one's only got 18%, so we're going to leave that one alone for right now. Um, let's see here, this one, nope, that one doesn't have any Quantanium in it which you can tell pretty quickly by the uh, by where the zone is at. Yep, that one doesn't either, because as you can see, the green zone is pretty far up the spectrum and is pretty large as well. The Quantanium ones always have a little one, and that one doesn't either. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to crack this one. And because this is a much smaller rock now, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just use a little bit of power there we go. And his zero laser on there is also helping to to maximise that optimal charge window. Um, so we're going to go ahead and power this up and crack this. Now I've learned a couple tips and tricks here recently. Uh, one of them being that if you mine like on the fault lines, you'll start to see these. Oop, oop, we're getting too much there. There we go. Uh, you'll start to see these fault lines pop up on the cracks and uh, if you mine on those you actually get a much better uh, power input to the rock and I believe you actually get a much better crack as far as um, the actual percentages in each of those so that you can crack it out like by you know, quantanium in one area kind of thing, borace or whatever else you've got in the rock kind of in another another shard of it. Um, there we go, another perfect break. That zero laser des definitely does help, so if you have a if you have another person uh, with a prospector who can uh, who can help you, that makes a massive difference. As you can see he's popping that one in and that optimal charge window just jumped a significant percentage. Um, so we're going to crack this one. This one's only got like 18% Quantanium. So we're not going to be too finicky about this one. We'll crack it out and, and see what all we have in there. Um, but it's not, uh, not particularly critical and should go relatively easily and quickly uh, because of that. We just kind of want to get a little bit too high there. 
This one's actually pretty touchy. Um, and I just find kind of bouncing backwards and forwards inside that zone is the best way for me at least. Um, and you can kind of do that by adding in and subtracting power to your mining laser uh, by scrolling up and down on the mouse wheel. And that just lets it cycle in between there. And there we go, there's another crack. So, and then we can of course scan those. That one's got 100% inert material there, so not particularly good. We'll just leave that one alone. Uh, this one has got 45% quantanium, so there's a decent amount in there. And then we'll check this one as well. That one's got 17%, so not particularly useful there. So we'll go ahead and crack this one. And as you can see, that uh, that optimal charge window is growing again because we've got two, uh, two, two lasers on it. His power setting is at zero, uh, which adds a little bit of uh, stability to it because of the different modules and stuff that he has on his prospector. Uh, but he's not actually putting anything into the rock as far as power output goes. So that just helps to, uh, to raise the size of that optimal charge window and uh, allows it to work significantly better. You don't have to worry so much about uh, getting into the overcharge zone um, and messing up your, your rock. So I've also got a couple of different modules that I've got on here. Um, I guess the first thing is the mining laser that I have on here is called the Lancet mining laser. Uh, you can pick those up at a couple different locations around the burst. And um, that has three subcomponent modules that can be put onto it. Um, so I've got all three of those slots filled up right now. Uh, the first one is a filter XL module, which is, uh, is good for when you're cracking and actually sucking up these rocks. Uh, you've got, there we go, good 100% quantanium there. Uh, you've got uh, all the inert material that's in the rock that the um, some of that gets reduced however much you want to do and um, then we'll go ahead and crack this one as well because he's over here we want to make sure that he gets some as well um, there we go perfect so I'm going to go ahead and we'll increase power here and we'll show off uh, the different modules that I've got. Okay, so this is charging. I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt 2. And that's immediately going to bounce it right into the optimal range. Uh, that was the surge module. And uh, basically what that does is it puts um, it puts a big blast of energy into there. And hit Alt F3 as well. Basically what that does is it increases the charge rate of the optimal window there and greatly reduces, there we go, the amount of time that it takes to actually crack one of these rocks. So I'm going to go ahead, there we go, we've got another one that's got a decent amount of quantanium, so we'll go ahead and crack that one as well. There we go, good, I've got my stabilizing laser on there, we can go ahead and crank up the heat a little bit. This one up into the optimal zone. Now this mining laser, the uh, the pulse that I put in there, it only lasts for a little bit of time, approximately 90 seconds, I think it is. Um, and it will also overcharge with that same rate. So you've got to be careful. You do not want to get that one uh, into the overcharge window because it will overcharge just as quickly as it does in the optimal window. However, once you get it into that optimal window, it greatly increases your uh, the speed. It's like 125%. There we go, another perfect crack. And uh, so it, it basically means that you don't have to sit there all day uh, getting, the, uh, getting the rock cracked. 
So I'm going to go ahead and we'll get this one up into the zone again. And this is basically the process that you use. You uh, you get into, you find a rock first of all, which I've, I've had quite a spot of luck today, and uh, found, actually this is the third rock that I found that had a good percentage of quantanium in it. Um, and so I've had quite a, a, good, uh, a good run of luck. Um, finding the quantanium today. But uh, once you've found that rock, you basically just want to find... There we go, another good crack on that one. Um, you basically just want to find your your zone in there. And you're going to go up that one. So that one's just got four ace in it. We don't want to bother with that one. Um, that one does not have any quantanium in it either check this one and that one does not show any either so we're just going to verify this one's probably going to need further cracking as well uh, but that one does not have any either and that's all inert so we're just going to go ahead and uh, very good 100% quantanium on several of these cracks Okay, so we're going to leave these right here, because he's got, uh, yeah, 100%, very good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn over to this one then, and uh, start sucking up uh, the various different ones that I've cracked down to 100%. And uh, before we do that, I'm going to show you something here. I've got my quantum drive, and I've got my marker already set right over here for the... Crusader L1 that I'm going to go to. That's so that when we get all of this sucked up, we can go directly there because this is uh, this is volatile. If you suck a whole bunch of it up into your cargo hold, um, let's see if that's 45 as well. I'm going to go ahead. There we go. We're going to go with inert. Sorry, 100% quantanium. So I'm going to go ahead and, and vacuum this up, and as soon as you get some of this into your hold, much past like one SCU, it's going to trigger it and it's going to say this is volatile cargo. Um, it's 100% inert as well. Just scan this one as well. There we go. So volatile cargo. That means that if I get too many jostles or jounces on this thing, it's going to destabilize and explode. Um, and the same thing goes for if I... Um, if I take too long to get from here back to the ship, I've got... Or back to the space station, I've got about 15 minutes or so. Uh, from the time of first putting it into my hole. There we go. So I've got 14 minutes um, to get it back to the station or my whole ship will go kaboom. So everything that you can do to shorten that necessary time uh, is going to greatly increase, first of all, your chances of survival and uh, also, the uh, reduce the stress, I guess, of, uh, of having to run around with uh, with explosive material in your hold. As you can see, I don't have any inert uh, material in my hold. That's got 17%. So we're going to we're going to leave both of those. That's 100% inert as well. I'm going to go ahead and pop over here, and we'll get just the rest of these. This one should be 100% as well. Yep, 100% quantanium, so I'm going to go ahead and suck that one up as well. 29, 30, I can fit 32 SCUs in my hold of quantanium. Perfect, we'll go ahead and grab that as well. And perfect, I'm now cargo full. So, I'm going to go ahead and we'll swap out of mining mode. I've got about, uh, let's see here, 13 minutes, even. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quantum travel 
to the Crew L1 location. And we're going to drop this off. And there are a couple of, uh, couple of tricks to doing this. So first off, as soon as you get there, um, you want to get uh, steaming towards uh, the location, the, the station. And as soon as you get within range, you want to go ahead and request landing. You'll do that by hitting F1, the function 1 key on your keyboard, and then clicking into the bottom left tab that has the little people icon on there, and you're going to request landing uh, from the station. That'll be right down here. And uh, let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and jump in the stream channel. There we go. And uh, you'll just go ahead and request um, request landing, and that'll give you an assigned pad. Now, if you're very low on that uh, mining timer, I'm told that you could not request landing and just go and, and hover over the pad, and basically what's going to happen is the station is going to tell you you're blocking the landing pad. If you don't get out of there in a minute, uh, they're just going to automatically uh, take your ship and pop it right into storage, and they're going to find you for blocking the pad. Now, that's significantly faster than landing, taking the elevator down, all that kind of stuff, and then sitting there, pressing the storage button, all that. It's, it takes 30 seconds to a minute. So if you're really tight on time, that's that's what you want to do, and that'll get you into there, and the, and the fine is like a couple thousand out for UEC. No big deal. A load like this is, is going to run somewhere around 275,000 alpha UEC that I'll make from this as soon as it's refined and uh, I take it down and, and sell it. Um, the other thing that you want to do is when you're coming into land you don't want to be flying too quickly because um, you don't want to set down too hard and you also don't want to have to jostle and, and swing yourself around to realign with the pad and uh, jostle that cargo because it is volatile um, and you get too many g-forces on it and it's going to decrease the timer for how much time you actually have. So I'm going to turn off my spool drive there uh, because... hang on... something's not working here. I'm going to go ahead and jump into my star map and I'm going to clear route. There we go. That's what it was. And I'm going to go ahead and jump straight to the station. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my quantum travel. I'm going to go ahead and accelerate to a decent speed just so that I can get right into the station as quickly as possible. I'm going to switch into mining mode here too so I can check my time. I've got just short of 10 minutes. I've got plenty of time. No need to, uh, to hurry or worry, we've got plenty of time here. So I'm just going to maintain a good speed, this is about 387 uh, knots, as you can see on the, or actually that would be meters per second, sorry, um, on the, as you can see on the left hand side there of my speed tape. Um, and I'm going to do that until I get about to right here, and then I'm going to start slowing down, just because I don't want to get too fast burning into here. And we're going to bring it down yeah, about 200. There we go. So we can contact ATC to land. I'm going to hit C so that I continue steaming towards the station while I'm getting that. That's my cruise control. This C there. And I'm going to go ahead and request landing. There we go. And they're going to go ahead and give me a landing bay. And so I'm going to go ahead and take cruise control back off. Because I don't want to slam in the station or anything. That would be very bad. And we're just going to basically roll back and forth here between speeds um, just until we get pretty close. We're going to drop our landing gear using the N key. Landing and then we're going to go ahead, there we go, landing gear down. We're going to go ahead and set up. Uh, we're going to use our mouse wheel to scroll down and reduce the speed of 
the ship because we don't want to we don't want to come in here too fast. And you can see that, that continues to decrease. I'll hit control to come down and land. And I'm gonna kind of position my ship as close as I can. Well relatively close. There we go, and we are down. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of here. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay. Okay. And we're gonna jump out of our ship and we're gonna immediately go down to the station and we're gonna store it. Because that's going to stop the timer on that um, on that, that volatile cargo. So instead of continuing to count down while we go down to the refinery, um, it's gonna pause and uh, basically eliminate all danger of that thing blowing up. So we get to keep our ship, we get to keep all of the, uh, the valuable um, quantanium fuel in there. And, uh, come on. This is another reason why it's good to leave yourself a little bit of time. Sometimes the elevators can take a little while. So if you've got an extra, you know, five minutes or so of time, that's good because that leaves you, it leaves you just a little bit of a window of safety there. Because um, reclaiming one of these things can take, I think it's nine minutes, unless you put a little bit of extra. And then of course you've got all of your time uh, going out there, cracking the rock, coming back, all that kind of thing. So you want to be careful and, and um, make sure to take all the little steps that you can to, uh, to ensure that your valuable load of, of quantanium drives safe and sound and uh, with the minimum amount of hassle and fuss. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and store that. Just like so, and there we go. And that has stopped the timer on that volatile material. So we're going to go ahead, this is the Crusader L1 station. Obviously the uh, the layouts are going to be a little bit different depending on which station you go to. The reason I'm going to the Crusader L1 station is because there's actually a little bit of a bonus um, to the yield that you get uh, from Quantanium when you go to the Crusader L1 mining station. And I believe the Arc L1 mining station also has that same bonus uh, so when you're when you're mining quantanium going out of either of those is uh, is kind of the perfect station to do that from and uh, the travel distances are also uh, relatively short uh, for getting to and from the, uh, the Aaron halo and having a good uh, a good amount of quantanium So we should be arriving here momentarily. There we go. As soon as my computer catches up, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to set up our mining order. And we'll see how much that haul of 32 SCUs of Quantanium Hi, good is back. going to net us. Finding everything all right? All right, so I've got two work orders currently processing. This one is just one that had some borase in it. Um, that's going to yield me about a thousand units or so. 800, 818, there we go. Um, and so that's going to just help to pay for some of my refining costs. Borase, uh, once it's all refined, only gets you about 35. Um, 35 uh, alpha UEC per unit, so it's not huge. I just about always use this Dinix solventation method or the Ferron Exchange. The Ferron Exchange uh, has a lower speed, but it has a moderate cost, so this would cost me 12,800 alpha UEC to process it, but would be done in 14 hours and 13 minutes. Whereas if I go to this Dinix solventation, 
It's a very low speed, low cost, but high yield, and so it would cost me 6,400 alpha UEC, so half of that price, but it's gonna take me double the time. So it's gonna take a day, 24, 24 hour day and 18 hours. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that because I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'm not gonna be playing probably for another week or so till, everything all right? well, till Saturday, uh, unless my unless my work and my, my homework is significantly less than usual. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, We'll leave that to process, and uh, in my next video, we'll see about uh, taking that load down to see just how much we make from that. But it, sh it should be somewhere around 275,000 alpha UBC. So, uh, considering the almost 500,000 that I'm that I'm sitting on right now, between that and the other load that I took in earlier, uh, we should be sitting on a million. Alpha UBC by next Monday or so. So that'll be good. That'll be uh, that'll be quite um, quite enjoyable to have that much. I'm trying to save up to see uh, what sort of ship I want to get next. Um, I think the plan is probably to either go with uh, a cargo hauler or else uh, just stockpile the money. There we go. And uh, we'll see about um, see about getting a mole, which is the next size up car or uh, mining ship, and um, can hold I think two or three times the amount uh, that the prospector can. And so it's uh, it means that you can make. Uh, one trip out there and and suck up quite a bit then um, and then return with that full load of quantanium in, in only one trip so my crew member is out there um, at the location that's kind of the distance that we're at six million one hundred and forty six thousand kilometers um, so that's that's the distance um, that we're kind of at to get uh, to get that quantanium, and that's in between um, the Crusader L1 and the Arc L3 uh, quantum travel locations. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll jump back in our ship. Um, I am going to go ahead and uh, make sure that I fill up. There we go. Uh, fill up my quantum fuel before I go out there because I have had the experience before where I'd mined up a load of uh, a load of materials and then didn't have enough quantum fuel to make it back and I decided that was the last time I was going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill up our quantum fuel. It's only 18 alpha UEC to do that. Um, it doesn't cost hardly anything, so it's well worth doing that. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and spool up here, and uh, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, swing around, and uh, I'm going to jump into my into my star map here. There we go, and I'm going to set my route back to my crew member. There we go, and we're going to align there. Just gonna go ahead and uh, jump back to it. There we go. So yeah, the uh, the way to do this, I guess, when you're when you don't. Oh, ah, Star Citizen bug strikes again. <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, this has dumped me back out here, and it's probably stored my ship back in storage. This does happen occasionally. Uh, and unfortunately, the only way really to do this is to uh, to suicide yourself. Um, I'm going to check my inventory here and just make sure that I don't have anything with me. I don't think I really do, so I'm not worried about losing anything. 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'll hold the backspace button. And that's going to suicide me. And I'll have to, uh, have to respawn my ship because it's going to end up uh, back at the Crusader L1 location. And um, I'll have to... Uh, yeah, it's kind of it's it's kind of weird. It, it tells you that you're at a different location than where you're actually at. Um, I should be at the Crusader L1 location, unless it didn't say it properly. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and hit Y to get out of my medical bed here. There we go. And. Um, Unfortunately, it looks like the station has not really spawned in around me. Uh, so we're just going to uh, we're going to end the video right here, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how you uh, how you do Quantanium mining. Hopefully, there we go. Now we can see out here. Um, we're going to go ahead and head back to our ship, and this should be spawned. I should be right back. Well, wait for the rest of the station to load in. <laughs> Star Citizen. It does have uh, it does have some bugs and technical glitches on quite a regular basis. This is one that I've dealt with um, quite often. So if you just wait for the uh, looks like he's back on his way. If you just wait for the um, that was weird. Perhaps my prospector is going to show up there. Um, is I've got this, uh, we're just going to wait for this to come back in. It should respawn here in, in just a moment. Um, you don't want to run out there because it's it's not going to realize that there's actually a station there. It hasn't physically spawned in yet. And so, unfortunately, that's uh, you'll just drop into space and die. And uh, nobody likes that. As you can see, the uh, this is kind of like the, the outside of the station. Well, I guess the, the backwards facing. There we go. We should see that pop in. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, walk around back to our ship. And we'll see where that's at because I'm hoping it's actually going to tell us that it's right here. Because otherwise, it's, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, to actually get out there. There we go. Yep. So we're just going to go ahead and retrieve it. And uh, that should fix the problem. There we go. Pad 4. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and head back out there. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change my outfit. Because if you go outside uh, with just the medical gown on that I have here, uh, it will end up killing you. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can drag that off. There we go. Uh, we'll put our our undersuit on. Which let's see. There we go. Put our undersuit on. Oh, well, should be able to. Alright, we'll stand out here and try this. Hang on. This is pad 4. Where is my ship? It's supposed to be right here. Something's something's not right here. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and head back downstairs then. This is, uh, this is Star Citizen. It does have bugs. Uh, but it is, uh, it does have quite a lot of uh, playable content. This is just uh, one of the more lucrative ways of doing it. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's quite fun. I quite enjoy playing it. I've, I've played quite a bit more since I've uh, joined an org, uh, an organization in game. It, it does make it quite a little bit more fun when you have other people with you. And you can, you know, work with and, and collaborate on things. Um, oh, goodness. Yeah, it looks like it's probably shown up back there so I'm gonna try and track this and see if I can see where it's at it does not show where that's at so uh, we're just gonna leave the video right here and uh, we 
will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.